Thanks for staying with us. Um, we're moving to our first hot topic, which is that Femi Falano, a senior advocate of Nigeria and human rights activist, has described the NNPCL for, or criticized rather, the NNPCL for illegally setting petrol prices post deregulation. He urges the NNPCL's price setting for Dangote refineries uh, petrol violates. He argues, rather, that it violates Section 205 of the Petroleum Industry Act, which mandates that petroleum prices be determined by market forces, not by the NNPCL or the government. Despite NNPCL's claim that forex liquidity issues influence price fluctuations, Falano contends that NNPCL's actions contradict the deregulation principles outlined in the Petroleum Industry Act. Uh, to discuss this with us is uh, Mr. Damilare Onyola, uh, energy expert. Good morning and welcome to the program, Damilare. Damilare, can you hear me? Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. Okay. Uh, now, so we've heard uh, what is going on in, uh, between NNPCL and Dangote Refinery and also the Nigerian people because as at this moment, we do not even know uh, what the price of Dangote uh, petrol is going to be like. Even when they refuted the claims of NNPCL that they were being sold for 898 Naira or so, uh, they did not still come out to say this is the true position, this is how much we are selling. So we don't understand what is going on in that sector? Are there intricacies that we, the laymen, do not understand? What is really going on, Damilari? You are the energy expert. Thank you, Richard. Let me start by saying it's quite unfortunate that we find ourselves, despite our long history and the major player in the energy sector, not just Africa, but globally. The PI has settled all this conversation. If we go through the section of the PI, I think the only part that talks about attendant PC now and gives them the power to act on anything that has to be pricing is when it has to be the natural gas. And here we are talking about the crude oil. And going back just after that section, the section 205, which the the next time quoted, it's clear that the market forces should be the one to determine petroleum prices. And if we go through the responsibilities or, or the functions of the NNPC, I'm reading from the PIE, which is the body that established the structure, can go to section 63 of the PIE all through the responsibilities, you have about eight responsibilities, and none has to do with petroleum pricing. So it's quite unfortunate that we are advocating, we are demanding, we are asking for a liberal market. And to add to that, the reason why there is no stability in the price is because NNPC Health is still using the dollar as a regulatory framework to determine this price. This is a transaction carried out here in Nigeria. The issue of dollar should not even come to play at all. NNPC Health, the central bank is clear on every transaction that is done within the country should be localized or transacted in the local Naira. So if NNPCL or spokesperson from Langoje Refinery is still insisting of dollarizing the whole transaction is absolutely illegal. And the NNPCL also as a player, they should always remember they are no longer regulator and which is part of the reaction or, or part of the immediate expectation or what we expect the PI here to do. We want to have the liberal market. We want to have the total direction market. So every marketer should be able to go to Dangote Refinery Depot and purchase their directly. Thank you. Yeah, but 
we, do we really have, um, because they were saying that market forces should be the ones to determine uh, the price of uh, fuel in Nigeria. Do we really have a market that is competing with this refinery that will determine? Because it's when there's competition that you can say market forces will determine. But is there really that kind of competition in Nigeria right now? Okay, thank you, Richard. You know, before now, we used to import most of these products. And right now, we have a refinery here in Nigeria. Before now, the landing cost, according to the major market house, used to be about 1,200 Naira. And the government subsidized and appealed to them to sell at 600 Naira. Mm -hmm. the landing cost, some costs on taxes, will no longer come to play because it's being manufactured, produced locally. So transportation, landing costs, and all those things, those are the overhead costs that should be determined by the market force. What do I mean by that? If I'm in Lagos, and I'm going to refinery in Lagos, so I should be able to approach I'm going to refinery and take in my core and sell the commodity. And let's not forget, this is a commodity that no one has the overall power on dealing with it because these are commodities solely owned by government because of its nature. So if, as I now, we are still having um, conversation on market or on um, market forces, on what comes to play, I think market forces is it's, it's, it's simple. It's a theoretical law that if it's accessible. I can go into um, Dangote Refinery as a marketer to pick my ball. Then I can sell our whatsoever. I can determine, I'll be able to determine my own price and sell myself. If it's profitable for me, then I will go and sell. So if people are going to Dangote Refinery to pick this, um, to pick this product, calculating their cost, calculating their um, calculating their cost and their closeness to the to the to the depot, definitely. People will sell at their own prices, and once there's competition that people are going to buy, then the market force can. I can decide to walk into any station to buy at the price that is affordable to me. Okay, um, we're being joined by a second guest, Evans Ufeli. He's a constitutional lawyer. Good morning, and welcome to the program, Evans. Barrister Evans, can you hear me? Good morning to you. Okay. Uh, now, okay. Um, we're talking about the fact that Dangote Refinery is having problems with NPCL, setting, trying to set the prices and all that and all that. Let us know the provisions of the PIB, for instance, uh, or PIA rather, because it's an act now, uh, that that maybe gives NNPCL the kind of powers it's wielding. But if it is not having these powers, why are they doing what they're doing right now? Well, the NNPCL, uh, by virtue of its conversion from a public corporation to um, a limited liability company, um, loses it, its regulatory authority by virtue of the PIA. Okay, it's now a player. It's now just like any other company within the uh, energy sector. Okay, and as such, it does not have the authority to uh, set price or determine the price of uh, PMS and the rest of that. So what they have done is that they've usurped the power of the upstream downstream regulatory commission. Uh, which have that, which has retained the regulatory authority and powers to so operate and all that. And it's so unfortunate that um, the NNPCL have, uh, over time, the last you know, one month, have demonstrated to Nigerians that they do not have the interest of the citizens at heart.
Talk with it. We're just uh, wondering why there is a back and forth between Dangote and NNPCL, fixing the price and all that. Falano has come out to say that is the, uh, the lawyer and uh, human rights activist has come out to say it's illegal. So we'll find out how illegal that is, the gravity of what is happening right now, the position of, of NNPCL in the energy sector in Nigeria. Let's take that break. We'll be back. <music> Thanks for staying with us. We're sorry that we had to take a short break and disrupt the conversation. We're looking at the fact that a human rights lawyer has said that uh, NNPCL is wrong. In fact, it's illegal for them to fix prices for Dangote uh, refinery. We're trying to make sense of what the position of NNPCL is right now in the scheme of things. And we're talking to Evans Ofeli uh, when we lost his uh, audio and some tech problems came up. Evans would like to continue with you uh, to tell us uh, what the position of NNPCL is right now in the scheme of things. Do we even still need NNPCL? And if we don't need it, which body should do the regulation of uh, our energy sector? The body empowered by the PIA to do the regulation is the upstream and downstream uh, regulatory commission and not the NNPCL. The NNPCL it's now a player, it's now a company, okay, that is supposed to go manage, you know, the refineries that we have, the existing refineries that we have, bring them back to life, and then begin to act just the same way that go to produce the refine, produce and sell to marketers. Okay, but it has left that function. Not too long ago, it's calling bidders to come and bid to take over the management of these refineries. Okay? As simple as that is, it has led that function and have you stop, you know, the, the liberal market and turn it to a monopoly, thereby creating two layers of monopoly in one one uh, 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 area, area of uh, the, the energy sector, rather. Now, Dangote, Dangote as we speak, is a monopoly itself, okay, as we speak. Then... The NNPCL have also gone to create a second layer of monopoly legally by uh, taking that charge of being the sole distributor of that product, creating another monopoly and all that, and have decided to also usurp the authority of the regulator to also fix price and increase price at will. Okay, so at the end of the day, we are trying to bring the price of PMS as low as possible by the advent of the Dangote refinery, which is supposed to cut down importation duty and all other variables that come with exporting food and importing food. But at the end of the day, what the Nigerian is going to spend in purchasing the crude within the country, even when the crude was sold in Naira, is going to almost be higher than what we were using to import it in the past. Because uh, the NNPC have created bureaucracy and chain of they have created themselves, they have created themselves as a as a wholesaler, they have created now a retailer, independent marketer, and a consumer. So before the product gets to the end user, the price and the profit margin of all the layers and cadres of the players in the in, in the in the oil sector, the price would have increased to a point where it would have been better you were importing it from out. So Dangote is a, is a necessary, uh, is, is an unnecessary uh, a bottleneck, an unnecessary bottleneck that need to give way. Okay, the federal government have to call Dangote, uh, the, the NNPC or rather, the federal government have to call the NNPC to order. And then, you know, uh, let this energy sector operate based on PIA. Now, now, I mean, let, just, Barista, just a moment. Is this happening because the upstream and downstream is failing in their responsibility, or why is it happening in the first place? Because they should be uh, talking out right now and saying that uh, 
uh, Dangote is usurping their, their functions, but they're not, they don't seem to be saying this. Is it because uh, the PIA is really not in force it's, it's or not, because of what? It's not Dangote that is usurping their functions. It's not Dangote that is usurping their functions. It's the NMPCL. NMPCL is usurping the function of upstream and downstream, and they're not talking. Why is that? Yeah, yeah, they are, they are not talking. I do not know. Uh, uh, there's, there's someone muted the idea that there is uh, a possible conspiracy that both are working in concert to ensure that uh, there is no there is no Libra market. That is by the wayside. It's not official, so I, I I'm not going to rely on it. But people are muting. I've heard that in in the sector. Okay, but they are supposed to you know take their right to play, so, uh, so that. The NMTC will take its right to place as a player and not a regulator, not one that comes to people. Not, I mean, even the idea of NMTC being the sole distributor, it's also wrong. It's wrong because it, 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 it does not have that capacity any longer to function as a regulator. So why should it be the sole uh, purchaser? Some many better marketers are saying that they may look elsewhere to get the product because it might be cheaper elsewhere. And this for me is unfortunate. Okay. Unfortunate um, because when we didn't have crude, when we didn't have a refinery, a functional refinery, we're saying if we had one, the price would not be this high. Now we have one, the price is higher than it was when we didn't have any. So okay. It, it, it's not a good place to be at, at, at the time. All right. Uh, let me go to Damilari as we try to wrap up uh, this uh, segment. Um, uh, now that uh, NNPCL is talking and Dangote also seems to be uh, silent about it, he seems to be comfortable with the fact that Dangote is trying to fix prices. We, we heard NNPCL telling us what Dangote sold the PMS uh, to them for and they came out to say this is not so. But they didn't tell us the actual uh, price that they sold this product to NNPCL and the actual price that they will be selling to us uh, before October 1 because uh, October 1 there's supposed to be a different price because they will start to do transactions in Naira and all that and all that. So um, Advance just brought a conspiracy theory, let's put it that way, that a lot of people are now following that there is this co collaboration, there is this... Uh, uh, cooperation between Dangote and NPCL and even maybe the government by extension to do what they are doing and it, they don't have the interest of Nigerians at heart. Is there an explanation that you can have as an energy expert to that? See, si. see, si, Richard. My name is Nyamgo, by the way. It's not Richard. Richard is my producer. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm on. Go ahead, please. We've been on the we've been we've been on this issue for a long time. And I'll try to react to what you said. Also there has always been scarcity. And the reason for the scarcity has always been lack of supply from NNPC. We brought in the PI. The PI stated more than 10 years for it to be cast into law. And one of the actions from the PIA is removal of subsidy. One other reaction from the PIA also right. NFPC to so NFPC Limited to so make them so we You can't be a regulator and also a player. And the last thing also is also to make a status DPRA, DPR into two bodies as a mirror. DPRA is part of DPRA, which is the Grand Downstream and Midstream Regulatory Authority, that deals the pricing. The PIA is clear on what is expected from NFTCL Limited. It's clear. And also, the PIA is also clear on the liberal economy should be. You know, agencies of government just have 
have a way of making a simple document to be complex. Reading through the direction of PI is to create an economy that would promote tea competition oil and gas industry. Has the PI been able to achieve that? Yes, in a way. Before now, okay, let me give an example. On my road, presently we have six, ten NNPCL, but it used to be only one. Because they know they have now have to make profits. They also have to need for a way to make people to get their franchise so they can also make money. They are doing that now. Or you see the, the parts of the regulator. If I am a player, I determine the price. I also go to, I'm also the sole distributor. I buy, then I sell to other players. So where is the point? We go out, we go to restaurants, people buy the same rice, but the price are different. But people that wants, people that wants to buy very high, we buy very high. What is determining that is the market see at the end, the end users saving hand of this. If I can go to the airport, get my own store, I can decide to sell with five naira, I can decide to sell with two naira, but NNPC help put a car which is totally out of that function because the, 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 the act is clear on that. Let the market forces determine the price. So okay. our conspiracy theory, but I'm only seeing a part of agency that has a, 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 a player because I wouldn't call them at all because if it's yeah. NDPR or NUPR that is saying it, that's okay, fine. But with this new, there are so many functions that are limited to play in the industry and to act on behalf of the government as a player. NNPCL is not NNPC, even though I saw a certain guy saying, oh, the NNPCL is an agent of the NNPC and, and blah, blah, blah. All right, all right, David Larry, we've really run out of time right now. We really run out of time now, but I, I know this is a conversation that will continue as it is. Uh, it will continue in uh, uh, the coming days because we have not even seen the fuel from, uh, from Dangote Refinery getting to the consumers, and we're still waiting for that October 1 price and see what is going to be. Let Dangote come out clean and tell us what is going on. Let the government also come out clean and tell us what it is, what it is because the president is the minister for uh, petroleum, and he's silent about it and all these things are happening here. Uh, let it not be like people were th talking about. He's only good at uh, taxing people and making sure that he makes more money, forgetting that the people who he's milking to make this money need also to breathe a sigh of relief. But I'd like to thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the show this morning. It's unfortunate that we didn't have as much time as we wanted. Uh, thank you so much, Evans Ophelia, uh, for coming on the show, and Damilario Oyola for coming on the show. We've been talking with Evans Ofeli, constitutional lawyer, and Damilari Onyola, uh, an energy expert. Uh, we were saying uh, uh, the Dangote were quoting the uh, constitutional, or rather, the human rights lawyer, uh, Femi Falano, who said that it was wrong, it was illegal for NNPCL to set a price for Dangote. And we were trying to get around making sense out of uh, why whatever is happening is even happening in the first place. But we'll take a short break and when we return we'll be talking to our second guest on another topic. Just stay with us and find out what that is.